Okay, I have 930 on the dot. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hello and good morning, everybody, and welcome to With Open It's Possible, the 2023 Open Education Week virtual conference hosted by Texas Tech University Libraries. Uh, we want this to be a welcoming space, so any form of harassment will not be tolerated and may result in removal from the virtual conference for the rest of the week. Um, as a courtesy to our speaker, please keep yourself muted, and we would actually encourage you to turn off your video during the presentation if you would like. This session is being recorded and will be posted on the live TTU Library's YouTube channel after the conference has completed. Closed captioning has also been enabled. Um, I will be putting a link here in the chat um, that will take you to the conference webpage that will include our schedule for the week, um, as well as information about uh, other sessions and our keynote speaker. Uh, Please use the chat feature to submit any questions at any time. I will be monitoring questions as they come in and ask them to the presenter during the Q&A portion of the presentation. If you would like to ask a question anonymously, please chat with me directly and make sure to indicate that it's an anonymous question. You are also welcome to turn on your camera and, uh, and verbally ask questions during the Q&A portion. Now I'd like to introduce our presenter for this section, session. Uh, this is Jesse Taylor from Angelo State University, and he will be talking about using LibreText and My Open Math to create a math book to create a book for Math 1324. And Jesse, I'll go ahead and give you the floor. Thanks very much, Sabrina. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen in just a second. But before I do that, I want to acknowledge that the materials I'm going to be talking about today were created jointly with Dr. Susan Abernathy and Dr. Dennis Hall in my department at Angelo State. Uh, and that the work was funded in part by a Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. Um, they have some OER grants, and in particular, this one was funded by what's called a development grant that we received a few cycles ago. So um, that being said, I'm going to be talking about Math 1324, um, which is math for business majors, essentially. So hopefully you can all see my screen here. I've got the book pulled up. Um, there should be a link uh, in the chat at some point um, to this book. But this is the book that I want to talk about. So I just want to point out a few things. Um, so this is the book that we made. As it says, this textbook was authored by contributors around the world and compiled by professors at Angelo State University. So I want to indicate that we didn't actually write much of the material in this book. Um, we did go through and edit it. So this book in particular, we want to have business applications, right? It's for business majors um, and other majors, but primarily for business people. And so we copied big sections of, for example, um, OpenStax's college algebra book, but we didn't need all the theory that they had, um, but we wanted more applications than what they had. Um, so just to show you a little bit about what the book looks like, right? So it's organized um, in these chapters. We created these little images so that it would have a cohesive look, um, but let's just like click in. So we go to chapter one, algebra essentials. You know, there are these descriptions. Um, we click a section, say polynomials. Um, we have our learning objectives at the front. You know, we're sort of talking about polynomials and whatever. And the book is interactive. It's not just like a PDF. So for example, right, like they give you examples and then here's an exercise you can try that doesn't show you the answer, but you can click through and get the answer. Um, so there are components that you can embed. Like, I mean, you know, it's a genuine ebook, not just like a replacement PDF. Um, and so in the past, what we had done for this class in our university is we were trying to adopt more open materials, but there wasn't like one good book for this. Like essentially we were using parts of OpenStax for the first algebra bit. And then we would go to David Lipman's Math and Society and get a few chapters on like financial math and probability. And so we were using two or three different materials, but that's can, can be confusing for students. They already sort of can have trouble navigating everywhere they're supposed to go. So really, um, the benefit of using something like LibreText, which I'll try and demonstrate briefly at the end of the talk, is if you are using several open resources, this is a great way to compile them into a single resource. Um, so this is just roughly what the book looks like, um, you know, just get, to give you a sense of what's in here. You know, there are images. Um, all the math is rendered using MathJax, which means that it's accessible if you are in the field of STEM or whatever. Accessibility of equations can be sort of tricky, but the coding for this website um, is is very accessible. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, of course, you need to go in and add alt text for things like images or whatever, um, but it's it's not too onerous to make it accessible. 
So this is roughly what the book looks like. Um, and I also want to mention that a big part of the grant was, you know, since we didn't write a lot of the material that's in these chapters, a big piece of what we did do is create a corresponding homework set that goes with this. So in the front matter, if you go to information for instructors, um, there's this information about how there's a companion course in what's called My Open Math. So let me briefly show you a little bit uh, about My Open Math. Um, let me, how do I get this toolbar out of the way? Here we go. So My Open Math is essentially a replacement for something like My Math Lab, um, the Pearson product, which is pretty expensive. Um, and it's not quite as flash or slick, you know, um, as one of these major publishing items, but the functionality is largely very similar. So there again, so we're, we have a little note to instructors up here. If they copy it, they can delete this note afterwards. Um, but if I go in uh, and look, so for example, I go to chapter four, maybe I want to think about quadratic functions. This is just a sense of what it's going to look like, um, you know, if I if I go in as a student and try and work some of these things. So, right, I have parabolas and I'm trying to identify what's the vertex of the parabola and axis of symmetry, et cetera. Um, you know, there are all these questions that test these various skills you know, including graphing tools, you know, algebra skills, et cetera. And we didn't write a lot of these questions either, although we did do a lot more writing in the homework set piece than in the textbook piece. But there are just catalogs of problems built in here. So if you are in particular like a STEM person, but even if you aren't, there are some non-STEM items in my open math, but this is largely just for sciences. So for example, if I go to look at um, the questions in this assignment, you can see the questions that are in here. Um, and if I wanted to add a question, I can look, right, like in all the libraries for, say, parabolas. And here are all the problems that people have used, and they're easy to sort of put into your assignment. So really what I'm trying to emphasize is you don't have to really, like, be a great coder in PHP, which is what this uses, to create these problems. A lot of problems have already been created that you can just sort of pull and add. Um, so anyway, we created all these homework sets that go with our book. So now the hope is that we're sort of replacing the publisher experience. We've got this interactive e-textbook, which is available for free, and we can update, and it automatically updates and pushes out. Um, and we've got My Open Math, right, which is also free, and we can go in and edit and pull these problems or tweak them as necessary, troubleshoot. My Open Math also does embed directly into Canvas and Blackboard. Um, I don't know if it does for other online management systems like learning management systems, but for example, in my finite math class this semester, right, I've got a link to the textbook in the navigation menu, and then the homework is just embedded in Blackboard. So it's really just like if you can get into Blackboard, the students have everything that they need for this class for free on day one. Um, which, of course, is good for a, a lot of reasons, inclusivity, um, you know, lowering barriers to entry, making just college more affordable for everyone. So these are the resources. So in my remaining couple of minutes, I just want to point out how easy it is to do what we did in LibreText. Um, so if I go to our book, which is Finite Mathematics, you know, it can feel overwhelming to create a new open educational resource, right? Especially if you don't have a lot of experience doing it. So let me just show you very briefly, like say I wanna create a new book. So I'm logged in, right? So you, you have to request um, to register on the site. And then what you do, you get an instructor account. Um, so I'm in my instructor account, which all that's of course free to do. So I go to tools in this bar over here and I go to what's called the OER remixer. And there are a lot of good things about LibreText, but for me as, Having looked into some of these things, this is the primary reason I would use LibreText. So I'm going to do a new remix. Of course, if I was working on one I'd already done, I would go to edit remix mode. So let's just say this is test. I'm doing it for Open Ed Week. And unlike my Open Math, LibreText has tons of subjects, right? I mean, they're not everything, but way, way more than just mathematics. So I'm going to stick with math um, because that's what my field is and what I'm familiar with. But just know that this resource is just for basically any class. And they've got a bunch of books just sort of preloaded into my open math. So I go to the bookshelves and here are they are all organized by topic. So say I want to do something with calculus. So I go to calculus. Um, I sort of open up the windows for calculus. Maybe I'm using open stacks, right? Okay. So book calculus, open stacks. And I want to talk about derivatives in my new book. Okay. So over here is my new book. So I'm just going to take the chapter on derivatives from OpenStax and drag it into the beginning right above the old chapter one, and it's going to call it my new chapter one, right? Okay, so I don't want any of these untitled chapters. I'm going to add what I want. Say I also want applications of derivatives. 
Okay, so I drag that chapter over there as well. Maybe I also want to think about um, some vector calculus. Okay, so I open up this book uh, about vector calculus, and I want to think about you know vectors in Euclidean space, and I want that to be the next chapter in my book. And that's going to be enough for the purposes of this. So after I sort of find some stuff that I want and I drag it over, I just hit save to server, right? It's telling me what's basically going to happen. I hit save to server again. And then it's just going to start building this book by copying over the resources. And while it's doing this, let me just comment that it's going to renumber everything for you. So if it was chapter four in OpenStax, but it's the first one in my book, it's going to renumber all those chapters. It's going to renumber the sections appropriately. To be included in LibreText at all, it has to be a shareable, editable license, and it will cite all that licensing for you. You don't have to worry about, is this the right license? What's the right way to cite this? The back ground information of this site does all of that for you so that you're like staying in line with, you know, everything that you're supposed to be doing legally. It's sort of like built in um, as a feature of the site. So I realize I'm out of 10 minutes. I'm supposed to be in a 10 minute slot. Uh, so I can field questions if people have them. And I will show you if people are still around in about this says 20 seconds, what it looks like after this finishes compiling. Um, but this is essentially what I wanted to do today talk about how we really needed a new resource and we were sort of cobbling together, you know, the resources we needed from a few places, but LibreText makes it easy to just put them all in one thing. Of course, the big caveat to that is you can only use the books that are already in LibreText, but they just got a big grant from the Department of Education. They're still adding books all the time. So even if you don't have, if they don't have what you need in this moment, in a year from now, they're going to have a lot more books in the system. Um, so it's, it should be getting better, not not worse. And they're very responsive uh, in my experience. Um, so, okay, this is done. So really quickly, let me look at the new text. So this is not published for public consumption yet. It's one in what's called my sandbox, but this is my new book. It's the chapter one from OpenStax, right? So like if I click it, the derivative ones, it's telling me, right, who is the author of this material. It's this person from OpenStax, right? It's citing everything appropriately. Um, it shared cites the license appropriately, which is just pulling from the previous resource. And it's now the, all the sections are renumbered to be my chapter one, right? And they're just copied over from whoever the previous author was. And if for some reason you want to edit these, right, you don't want them exactly as they're written, that's also very easy to do. You can just completely edit this and save it. And now yours was built on theirs and you can just author it as you see fit. So that's my presentation. Uh, I'm happy to field questions about it um, or, or anything else. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. That was really great information. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat or uh, go ahead and unmute and ask them directly. I have a question. Uh, sure. So you you mentioned um, you know that that you know this it may not be like my open math for example is not you know maybe as flashy as you know traditional publishers can make their stuff. Um, do you do you find that as like a, a hindrance for students, um, or do you think you know they're kind of performing about the same as they would with a traditional like platform? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a hindrance, um, and especially. You know, I shared the screen um, directly from my open math. But for example, if you go into Blackboard and look at the screen, um, you know, it it looks just like Blackboard, you know, like the 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 sort of what looks like kind of dated, you know, um, you know, screen representation on my open math, it's gonna look exactly like Blackboard if you have it embedded into your Blackboard course um, or Canvas course or whatever else. So if you've themed it up to look attractive in Blackboard or Canvas that theme is going to be also around the edges of the screen when you open my open math, et cetera. So no, I don't think it's a detractor for the students. Awesome. Uh, there was a question in the chat. So uh, you mentioned that you embed my open math and Blackboard. Can you demonstrate what that looks like? Let me see if I can get that up to a screen that's not going to display any information it's not supposed to um, and see if I can pull that up.
And then while you're doing that, someone else also asked, did you embed my open math into Libra texts? I, we did not do that. Um, so that is a good question about whether that's possible, but I think that that is at least complicated if possible. Um, so we we did not embed my open math into Libra text. So like, for example, that click through that I showed you um, is not really, um, you know, built on my open math or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I, that is not embedded. Um, so yeah, let me show you here what this looks like. Um, so yeah, we did not embed LibreText direct or my open math directly into LibreText to answer um, that person's question. Yeah, okay, so and Anton is saying it's possible using iframe, so maybe we'll look into that. Um, so let me share my screen again. So here I am in my Blackboard course. Um, it's for finite mathematics. And I go to my open math, which this is just the, the link that was generated um, by my open math. And so all the assignments that were in there are now displaying here. So if I go to like, uh, let's go to the same one we went to before. So like if I go to chapter four, right, um, this is the only section that I cover in this, this chapter in this particular class. So I go to quadratic functions. It's launching an LTI link, which is sort of redirecting me over. Um, so now I can see the same assignment that we were looking at before, except it's bedded into my Blackboard course. Same questions, same answer fields, et cetera. It will grade them automatically, right? So like if I go and say, oh, this opens downward and submit the question, it's going to tell the student immediately, right? Like it got it right or wrong. They can get similar questions. The problems are randomized. Um, you know, sort of a lot of the functionality that you would normally get with like a MyLab type product, um, you know, or, or whatever, or like a WebAssign type product. Uh, I think a follow-up question um, to the Blackboard was, are students' grades automatically synced to the Grade Center? Yes. So when you embed it uh, and it imports those um, those assignments into My Open Math, as part of that import process, it automatically creates a gradebook item. You can also import dates. So like if you set the dates in My Open Math and you import it, all those dates will carry over directly as due dates into Blackboard. The point values that you have assigned will carry over directly into Blackboard and it will automatically create a column in your gradebook. When the student completes it, it will automatically update that column in the gradebook. Yeah, so it's very um, slick in terms of like functional, what you would get from, you know, sort of published, you know, powerful product. Okay, and then- Thanks for that link, Anton, I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, and then one last question, um, how do you recommend talking to other math faculty about using OER or creating OER? Yeah, uh, good question. So I have a sort of unique perspective on this because I'm, in addition to being an associate professor, I'm the director of the faculty learning commons on our campus, which means that I'm essentially in charge of teacher development. Um, so like, how do you recommend talking to faculty about OER is a tricky question because faculty mostly fall into a few camps. One, they don't care about OER. Two, they're interested but intimidated. Three, they're interested and they're not intimidated and they're going to dive in and get their hands dirty, right? And so I think depending on who you are talking to, the approach sort of varies a little bit. Um, but I think that the main talking point for anyone who's trying to talk to other faculty about doing this is that you don't have to be a wizard to do it. Right. I mean, like a lot of people feel like it's going to be way more work to do the OER or to create an OER or like it's some insurmountable task. And it really isn't. I mean, maybe a decade ago it was, but now there are so many good tools out there like Merlot, you know, LibreText, MyOpenMath, all these other sort of open sources things that are, um, you know, they're really robust now. And so if if someone has tried and failed or like tried and been intimidated or whatever, um, I think the main talking point you want to point out is that like it's way easier than it used to be. Maybe just try, um, you know, so I'm not sure exactly whether that's like, you know, talking to faculty about using OER, or creating OER, um, if that's like to try to convince someone or just to like break the ice with someone or what. Um, I think in terms of convincing someone to use OER, there's a ton of research out there that suggests like this is really good for equity in the classroom, right? I mean, like if you don't have $120 on the first day of class and then you don't have the book or the homework system for two weeks, of course you're not gonna do well. Um, so, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of 
there's a lot of good research and reasons to use OER in the first place, but it's also way easier to use as well. Uh, to answer Kathy's question, yes, it does also work for Canvas. I know it does work for Canvas and Blackboard. I'm not sure beyond that. Like, for example, I don't know if Moodle works um, or if or, or how it would, would go to, to do those sorts of things. Awesome. Well, that's it for our time. Um, Jesse, again, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to uh, present and to talk to us about your textbook and my open math. Um, yeah, there's a presentation right after this. Um, and this, we, like I said, was recorded. So, you know, you can always go back and rewatch this presentation um, later on. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Also, if anyone had a question that they didn't get to ask, feel free to email me directly. I'm happy to answer questions. Just jesse.taylor uh, <clears throat> at angelo.edu.